Are you ready? Today, we are going to talk about the main essay on the common application to give you the best shot of writing an essay that is acceptance worthy at even the most selective colleges and universities. Here's a dirty little secret. Some of the Common App essay prompts will bring you down like quicksand, while others give you the exact structure and framing that you need to show and tell a story that colleges will love. In just a couple of minutes, I will grade and rank each Common App essay prompt. But before we do, I first want to give you a bit of background information about me because I always say consider the source. So who am I? Who is the source of this video and why should you take advice from me? Well, my name is Craig Meister and I'm a college admissions coach who over the last 17 years has helped thousands of students apply and get into America's most selective colleges and universities. Every year, my students get into Ivy League colleges and many other hyper-selective and selective colleges and universities, so I know a thing or two about awesome Common App essay responses. I've become something of an expert on the Common App, both its past and its present iterations, and today I'm going to share with you a bit of what I've learned and how I advise my students to approach the Common App essay prompts. If you want to learn more about me, feel free to click on the link to my website, collegemeister.com, which you can find below this video. For instance, maybe you want or you need more personalized support than this video can provide. If so, be sure to learn more about my college admissions coaching services on collegemeister.com. Now, back to the issue at hand. As of this recording, the Common App has confirmed its 2022-2023 admissions cycle essay prompts. So this video is geared towards helping you crack the code on those. Yet, do keep in mind that if the Common App keeps some or all of these prompts in future years, this video will continue to be of use for many years potentially to come. If you don't already know this, please do understand that with the Common Application, you can apply to many colleges using this one common or shared application. This is a real blessing for students because back in the day when I applied, students needed to complete college-specific applications for each college they applied to, and each college application required its own paper form that had to be completed one at a time with its own unique questions, including essay prompts. Today, the majority of colleges that accept the Common App, which can be found online at commonapp.org, which is also linked below this video, require their applicants to complete one essay on the main or common portion of the Common App. Yet, as of this filming, hundreds of the thousand or so colleges that are members of the Common App don't even require that one main essay. Though, of course, many of the colleges that don't require that essay on the Common App are relatively easy to get into. So I always recommend that my students complete the Common App's main essay uh, in the event they want to have the option of applying to a college that requires it or want to submit an essay to a college that will potentially look at it, even if it's not required. And of course, most of my students and clients, you know, these are students who are aiming for the most selective colleges and universities in the United States. So the vast majority of my students have no choice but to complete the main or common app essay. On the common portion of the Common App, students have one of seven essay prompts from which to choose. Today, we're going to talk about all of these seven prompt options and how to pick the best one for you in order to write an articulate, overall impressive final draft personal essay. What I won't be talking about in this video are the college-specific essay prompts that you will find on some individual college's Common App supplements for very specific tips on how to complete some of those, please watch one of my videos focusing on how to get into a particular college, which I will try to make more of as time permits. I also won't be talking today about the Common App Transfer Application Essay Prompt, which is completely different than the First Year Application Essay Prompt. We are focusing exclusively on that latter one. So these seven prompts that we're going to be talking about today give are given to the uh, current students in high school, basically seniors, who are applying for their first year of college. So keep in mind, as I go through each of the 2022-2023 Common App Essay prompt options, if you are a first-year applicant applying to college using the Common Application, 
you do not have to respond to all of these prompts. That would be quite overwhelming. Instead, you only have to respond to one of them. I'm here today to help you figure out which one would be wisest to choose in order to help you your college application stand out for all the right reasons. So these general instructions for the Common App essay are as follows. You want to write between 250 and 650 words in response to one of these seven prompts. That's it. In terms of length or size of your final draft, please see below this video for a link to my article on admissions.blog, which is entitled Common App Essay Size Does Matter, which explains the ideal length that, that you want to aim for on your final draft Common App Essay. But for right now, let's tackle these prompts one after another. And after I give my quick summary on each, I will give the prompt a grade from A to F. And at the end, I'll give my final ordered ranking of all seven Common App Essay prompts. First, let's look at prompt number one. I will read it. Number one, some students have a background, identity, interest, or talent that is so meaningful they believe their application would be incomplete without it. If this sounds like you, then please share your story. Now, I'm not a huge fan of this prompt for anyone other than those students who have a really unique or in-demand personal background. So what do I mean by this? Well, maybe you were orphaned. Maybe you are from an underrepresented minority group that colleges are trying to grow on their campus. Maybe you were raised in a polygamous household and you can maturely reflect on that how that has shaped you into who you are today. You get the idea? Okay. I would not touch on this one unless you have a life experience that is pretty darn unique or in demand or both. If you do write in response to this prompt, make sure that you clearly identify in the first paragraph the background, identity, interest, or talent that you are going to be framing your essay around and provide within one concise thesis sentence in that first paragraph a clear overview of the specific ways in which it has shaped you into who you are today. Also, be very wary of simply just doing a book report on your unique background, identity, interest, or talent. Yes, you should show what it is, but you if you only do that, you're really skating on thin ice. If you choose to respond to this prompt, you must also structure your essay to show how you have grown, changed, and or matured as a result of having this background, identity, interest, or talent. So basically, you need to show not only what it was like to first recognize you had this background, identity, interest, or talent, you also need to show why it is still important to understanding who you are today and who you will be in the future. Lots of students also fall down on this one because they don't harness the prompt to show any personal growth in particular. Therefore, students often read as a relatively one-dimensional entity if they tackle it without keeping the priority of showcasing growth in mind. This prompt can also lull students into telling a very broad and shallow story rather than a deep and narrow one because many students will look at the prompt and want to tell the story of their whole life. That's a recipe for disaster when you only have 100, well, I'm sorry, not 100, but 650 words with which to work. So overall, I would grade this prompt a D for most applicants because it can seduce writers with the lack of strong structure because it can inspire them to write about topics that are really not that compelling or unique relative to their competition and because there is no built-in trigger in the prompt that would clue the writer into the fact that he or she needs to show growth in this essay. All right, on to prompt number two, and I will read it. Again, the lessons we take from obstacles we encounter can be fundamental to later success. Recount a time when you faced a challenge, setback, or failure, how did it affect you, and what did you learn from the experience? This prompt could really go either way, in my opinion. 
Far too many students answer this prompt for my taste. It's traditionally one of the top three most popular prompts to respond to, garnering roughly 20% of student responses. So when you were thinking about positively differentiating your college application in a selective admissions environment, why would you want to pick an essay prompt completed by so many of your peers? On top of that, so many students who do pick this prompt base their essay on a pretty common teenage topic, like not making the varsity team or not getting the leading role of the theater production. Again, how prosaic, how predictable. You don't want to come across as common with how you respond to this or any prompt. You want to be true to who you are and pick a prompt that allows you to present yourself in a memorable and differentiated manner. Yet, I have seen this essay work for students who really have had to overcome some personal challenge or adversity that was unique, and they did so in a way that demonstrated a character trait or two that was not as well emphasized on other parts of such students' applications. In such scenarios, this prompt could make good sense to pursue. If you do pursue this prompt, again, you want to make sure that you state clearly in the first paragraph the exact obstacle, challenge, setback, and or failure that your essay is going to be centered on, and at some point in the body and or the conclusion, go into detail about how you've come out on the other end in the, if, if, excuse me, the obstacle is something so big or recent that it's too hard to process, I would certainly avoid this prompt. For instance, if you have or are continuing to deal with an eating disorder but have not yet gotten it under control, this topic is going to open you up to a lot of critical eyes wondering if you are well enough to get through your first year of college. If you pursue this prompt, make sure that you realize it's a two-part prompt meaning you not only have to show what the obstacle is, you also need to be able to reflect on it by telling the reader how it's affected you and what you feel you have learned most from the experience. Try to balance the essay out by dev devoting roughly 65% of your words to showing the obstacle or challenge you faced in an episodic manner, and then devoting the final 35% of the essay to reflecting on how you have grown and changed and what you have learned as a result of this experience and make it as meaningful to the reader as it is to you, which is hopefully a lot. So in sum, if you have faced a relatively unique obstacle and or adversity, this prompt could be your friend, but for the typical applicant, I would give this uh, prompt a grade of B minus due to the various foreseeable stories that this prompt often motivates students to write about. But if you're really an exceptional case, it might even be a higher grade essay prompt for you. Onward to prompt number three, reflect on a time when you questioned or challenged a belief or idea. What prompted your thinking? What was the outcome? Now, this prompt is incredibly specific, and that's why I love it. Most students simply won't relate to this prompt, which is why it's pretty unpopular. But unpopular also means if you can pull it off, you will write a very uniquely framed essay. While I don't suggest trying to fit a square peg into a round hole, I encourage students to think long and hard about whether or not they have a life experience that aligns with this prompt and are comfortable writing about it, their motivations, and the results. This essay prompt is tailor-made for students who are real leaders and not just talented at becoming heads of different clubs or organizations. Now, while I have not really elaborated on overall essay structure up to this point, I do want to do so now that we are talking about a pretty good prompt. The strongest common app essay responses will be structured in a relatively traditional five paragraph setup. Paragraph one will include a catchy hook intro, a strong thesis sentence, 
and enough juicy content that will inspire the reader to continue on to show uh, more information in the body of the essay that supports the thesis. Then a successful essay writer needs roughly three strong body paragraphs that show more than they tell. Finally, you need one or two closing paragraphs that are heavy on reflection and basically telling, while also showing a bit about how you have grown and changed as a result of all the action that you shared earlier in the body. Seriously consider the setup for any prompt you respond to, and of course, it will work very well should you opt to go with common app prompt number three. Prompt number three, more than many of the other prompts, really focuses the writer. As long as he or she fully responds to the prompt to provide the depth of development and balance between action and reflection that selective colleges are looking for from students who are completing the Common App essay, all in all, I would give this prompt an A-. minus. The only thing that brings it down is most students really are not leaders, no matter how many fancy titles they have on their resume. Therefore, most students have never really questioned or challenged a belief or idea in any sort of compelling manner. And if they have, they may not have really grown from the act of questioning or challenging a belief or idea, either because many haven't recognized it when it happened or uh, they haven't reflected on it that much. As a result, most students who attempt this essay will likely try to create a mountain out of a molehill and take themselves way too seriously. Yet, if you are a real leader, this is a great essay prompt for you because it's structured to tease out the most vital details of how an applicant may have made a real difference and in the process grown and matured a great deal. And as icing on the cake, few select this prompt, so it has the potential to differentiate you just by responding to it and not some of the others that you have to choose from. On to prompt number four, the meaty heart of the list, as I like to call it. And I say that both literally and figuratively because I do find prompts that give students better structure with which to build strong essays are in the middle of the pack of the seven common app, uh, essay prompts. In fact, I often analogize the seven prompts to a sort of hamburger. The bun is relatively worthless nutritionally, the bun being prompts number one and seven. And the further into the middle of the list you can find much more protein, which is healthier than what's in the bun, right? So that gives you a hint into what I think about prompt number four, which is smack dab dead in the middle of the pack. So it's like where the meat is in the middle of the hamburger. And here's the prompt. Reflect on something that someone has done for you that has made you happy or thankful in a surprising way. How has this gratitude affected or motivated you? Similar to prompt number three, not many students will have the ability or willingness to take this prompt on. But its specificity really lends itself well to a thoughtful and deep thinking student. You don't have to do this, uh, you don't have to, I'm sorry, you don't have to be a leader to produce a bang up unique and eloquent essay in response to this prompt. All you have to do is methodically respond to each component of the prompt and be smart and thoughtful with your choice of the something someone has done for you in order to make this essay really work for you. This is the newest prompt and probably the least popular of the prompts. Frankly, few are willing to take on the challenge of this one. But if you are a deep thinker and strong writer, this one is certainly worth attempting. But again, you must respond to the full prompt. As with all Common App essay prompts, don't just look at it once for inspiration without ever circling back to it again. You must keep this prompt in the front of your mind and ideally on the top of your document as you draft in order to make sure that you respond to it in its full glory. If you only are able or willing to tackle one part of the prompt and not the whole thing, 
For instance, let's say you want to write about something someone has done for you, but not about how that gratitude has for it has affected or motivated you moving forward, then you are really not ready to knock this prompt out of the park. But if you can swing both the showing of the something and the reflecting on how it has made you happy or thankful in a surprising way and how that gratitude has changed you or motivated you moving forward, you seriously should consider this prompt. Just remember, it's so important to show that which has been done for you and your reaction and how you've run with that reaction or others in the days, months, or years since to affect some sort of change in yourself or the world around you. Like many Common App prompts, this one is trying to squeeze out of you an ability to show personal growth through your choice of story and approach to showing and telling the story. Colleges want to see how you've grown or changed as a person. Again, for the savvy applicant, this essay prompt gives you an awesome opportunity to do just that. So all in all, for the applicant who dares complete it, I give this prompt an A. Let's move on to prompt number five. Discuss an accomplishment, event, or realization that sparked a period of personal growth and a new understanding of yourself or others. This is a nice and simple prompt, and it's obviously attractive to many students because it regularly garners responses from roughly a quarter of the students completing the Common App essay, making it the first or second most popular of them all. It's a good essay prompt because it forces the writer to focus on one episode that he or she can describe well before the applicant can turn his or her attention to reflecting on the growth that resulted from the episode. Sadly, many students don't get the balance right between describing the accomplishment, event, or realization, and detailing how they've grown since. I highly recommend that you show the accomplishment, event, or realization for roughly 70 to 80% of the essay, and then in the last 30 to 20% of the essay, focus on how you have grown as a result of the accomplishment, event, or realization. This balance will force you as the writer to show in detail while also still giving you space to demonstrate maturity and growth in terms of how you better appreciate yourself or the world around you now that the main action of the essay is in the rear view mirror. So all in all, a very respectable prompt and I give it a B plus for really any applicant. Almost all of us could and should be able to answer it well and in the right proportion of showing and telling while being true to who we are and what makes us unique. The only two things that brings this one down is how popular of a prompt it is and the fact that many average applicants will not strike the right balance between showing a scene and reflecting on its deeper meaning. Moving on to prompt number six, which is as follows. Describe a topic, idea, or concept that you find so engaging it makes you lose all track of time. Why does it captivate you? What or who do you turn to when you want to learn more? Now this prompt is awesome for a very small minority of students because it requires an applicant to do two things. First, he or she must share an area of passion, a real one, not one you say you have to sound impressive. Second, the applicant needs to write about his or her passion concretely. That's a twofer that's pretty hard to pull off for many adults, let alone teenagers. But if this prompt speaks to you, I say run with it because it's a pretty rare prompt for students to take on. And I know admissions officers give props to students who can pull it out. Yet, beware, most students can't pull it out because either they have interest in only topics that are relatively common and therefore unmemorable in the mind of admissions officers, or they have an interest in a topic or idea or concept that is too amorphous, complex, or abstract to write about in concrete or bold or memorable terms within the 650 word limit of this essay. 
the applicant really does need to ensure that he or she is keeping the reader in mind when writing so as not to get too abstract or metaphysical in terms of focus. But even when an applicant is able to write concretely about a topic, idea, or concept that he or she finds so engaging, even fewer applicants can get someone else excited about it in only 650 words, when especially if described in detail, it means that less time will be spent describing the applicant in all likelihood. So you have this double-edged sword situation where uh, if you focus too much on the topic, idea, or concept, you will likely lose yourself while doing so, or you focus, let's say, on you as the topic and seem conceited, but don't really anchor the essay in any particular story of personal growth, and you just come across as narcissistic. So you don't have much time or space to show growth on top of all these challenges. And the best common app essays do show growth. This prompt doesn't really lend itself to showing growth because you have to do so much other stuff. Plus, few in their teenage years have gone anywhere to actually learn more about a topic, idea, or concept that ca captivates them. Uh, so it's pretty rare a really rare situation, in fact, for a student to be able to pull off responding to that part of the essay prompt. Therefore, I say avoid this one altogether unless it speaks to you very strongly. Um, I would say that I give this one an overall grade of a C for the most exceptional among us, but honestly, for the vast majority among us, it's more like a C minus or a D plus. Uh, so just be wary of prompt number six. Finally, we arrive at prompt number seven. Share an essay on an, any topic of your choice. It can be one you've already written, one that responds to a different prompt, or one of your own design. <sighs> this is the go-to prompt for another one quarter of those who complete the common application essay. I, however, would never suggest that you select this prompt ever, 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 because the lack of structure dooms far too many writers into composing a story that is highly one-dimensional and lacking in any mature level of self-analysis or reflection. All of the other prompts at least give the writer the hint that he or she needs to not only show and tell a compelling story, but also explain how or why the story is important. This one just leaves the unsophisticated writer, which, let's face it, is the majority of students completing the Common App, all on his or her own. Like getting the keys to a glorious mansion without any furniture, heating, air conditioning, towels, or food inside. It's absolutely worthless. Strong writers would benefit from the structure of the previous six prompts. Average and weak writers are basically walking the plank if they choose this one. Yet every year, <laughs> millions play the lottery and only a handful win, and every year thousands of students roll the dice with this prompt and very few come up with much to speak of when it comes to writing anything compelling or memorable with prompt number seven. So stick to any of the other options, one through six over this one. Topic of your choice is bottom basement if ever there was one. I give prompt number seven, and F for everyone. So in summary, I rank the prompts as follows. Coming in at number seven is prompt number seven, which I give an F. Coming in at number six is prompt number one, which I give a D. Coming in in number five, I look to prompt number six, which I give a C. Coming in at number four, we have prompt number two, which I give a B minus. Coming in at number three is prompt number five, which I give a B plus. Coming in second place is prompt number three, which I give an A minus. And coming in first place, my favorite prompt, is prompt number four, which I give the grade of A. No matter which Common App essay prompt you choose, please, please remember to commit to fully responding to the prompt. 
That one act alone will put you head and shoulders above at least 50% of students completing the Common App essay. For more on that topic, see a link below to find my video, Why, you should, why Your College Application Essay Is So Bad. That's actually the name of the video, Why Your College Application Essay Is So Bad. That's a really good short video. For a good measure, please also find below this video another link, this time to my video entitled, Why Your College Application Essay Is Awful, which gives you more vitally important information to ensure you don't embed a very common and wholly predictable fatal flaw into your common application essay. Thank you so much for holding on to the very end, but all in all, if you avoid the mistakes um, that I just mentioned that you watch and learn about while also maintaining a traditional structure that allows you to show and tell your unique story with your unique and thoughtful reflections, you are going to be giving yourself a real shot of producing a strong final common application essay. For personalized college application essay feedback and the very best developmental editing, substantive editing, copy editing, proofreading, and constructive critiques, that will help you perfect college application essays that would make James Joyce's jaw drop, please visit me at collegemeister.com where you can learn more about how to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. Good luck, and until next time, I am College Meister Craig Meister with all you need to get in.